So, Garnet, first off, congratulations. That was an Thanks, impressive Peter. race. Um, and a second jersey in this set of races, you must be very, very thrilled. Yeah, yeah. Like I was just saying, it's uh, gratifying to know that uh, a lot of those uh, late night training hours have, have paid off. And uh, most important, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's a good. Lot of fun. And tell me, how long have you been racing? I, I remember you from yeah, the Vernalers days. I mean, I'm sure um, you raced before that. I was like every other Canadian kid. I grew up playing hockey and baseball, lacrosse, and then uh, I started running to keep fit. And then, like a lot of us, injuries forced me to look for something else. And I started riding a bike out in New Brunswick, where I used to live, around uh, 89, 90, 91. And then I... Uh, hey, Garden. I... Uh, Hey buddy. And then I moved back to Ontario and I started doing triathlons. And I was always first in the bike splits. <laughs> but I was like in the bottom third for the running and the swimming portion. So uh, somebody said, why don't you just race bikes? So uh, yeah, I, I started just doing that and I started with mountain biking around uh, 98 or such. And then I switched, I joined the Oakville Cycling Club in 1999 and started racing club events for road. And uh, yeah, never looked back, and just went on to different teams and different abilities. And yeah, it's been a it's been a great journey. And I have no doubt you're going to continue racing. Ah, you know, I took um, I, around 20, 2010, 2011, I, I was a little burned out, and I took a bit of time away from road racing and. Uh, like a year, year and a half, or two years, or something, and then I came back and started mountain biking a bit, as as you and I uh, used to see each other a lot. And uh, I tell you, mountain biking is a tough sport. A lot of frustrations there. And I uh, did that for a couple of years. And when I knew that this facility was uh, coming on board, I went and bought a track bike and started training at the Forest City Velodrome again. And uh, here I am. Yeah. And I, I have no, I, you know, I. I foresee myself doing it in many years to come. So, step me through the race because it was a very tight competitive finish. Yeah, I'm glad it was entertaining. Um, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Um, I discussed it with uh, Rob Good, who gives me a lot of advice, and he said, you know, get on the journey right away, and uh, when the journey comes off, you know, hold your position, but don't don't lead the sprint out. And that's exactly what happened. I, I held my position. One guy came around me and I tucked him behind him. Another guy came up beside me, but not fully around me. And with maybe a lap and a half to go, um, it started to heat up, speed started to pick up, and we kind of got rid of the guy who was beside me. And there was only one guy in front of me and I, I, I really thought he was gonna take it because he won the silver medal in the sprint tournament. And uh, I just put my head down and, and I came around him with, I don't know, I'm gonna say 20, meters to go or something and beat them pretty handedly so yeah it was very gratifying. Now I can't imagine do they have a journey and the, do they run the Pure at uh, Forest City? They do <laughs> um, but it, it had a, it, they used to do it with a motorized one but the exhaust would stink up the building so I think Rob got an electric one well, actually first they used to use a bicycle a 10 speed he would just ride it <laughs> and uh, then he got the motorized one then he got an electric one and he used it for a few years but I, I don't think they're doing Kieran's there anymore. It's, it's just not practical. So you wouldn't have had a lot of practice. No, I've done, I have done Kieran's before, but maybe just a handful. Yeah. And you're going to be racing the Madison later too? No, unfortunately Masters can't. Um, hopefully as this whole scene progresses, Masters will get to do all the events. That's my what I would like to see happen, I'd like to see an Omnium for Masters, I'd like to see a Madison for Masters, because once, I mean, you know the Masters fields are pretty small, but once, so far. yeah, once this gets popular, I see a whole influx of Masters, and hopefully we can have the same um, races as the elite guys. That would be in a perfect world. I would love that. Because I've, I've had a lot of Madison practice at the Forest City Velodrome, and, and they're a lot of fun. A lot of fun. And exciting for the spectators. Absolutely. Yeah. So, how many events did you actually compete in? Six. I signed up for six. Five are done, and one more to go, the pursuit. And you've been on the podium four times? Uh, yes, four times. Yeah. Uh, bronze, silver, and, and two, two, uh, two jerseys. Two fortunate enough. Yeah. Two so you mentioned yesterday that you had 
one previous championship jersey. Yeah, football. in um, 2006, I was uh, riding in a, a Forest City, and the Nationals were in Bromont, Quebec, on a 250 outdoor track, and I was fortunate enough to win the points race there in 2006. Awesome. Um, and maybe another, a couple other medals, but that was the only one that I, I got gold in. So, would you say this weekend, these four days have been the highlight of your career so far? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, as far as track goes, definitely. Road's a, road's a different animal, um, but as far as track goes, for sure. In 2009, I went to Sydney, Australia, to compete in the World Masters. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't that competitive there. Uh, I just uh, I did my best, but uh, my results were not... Were not uh, that good, but that's okay. I mean, it was a learning experience, and I had a lot of fun. And the track was similar to this. Um, but yeah, so now uh, with this year, I'm thinking about going to the World Masters in Manchester in September, England. So we'll see. We'll see how my training goes. That would be excellent. Yeah. That would yeah. make for a racing great for a uh, rainbow jersey would be a thrill of a lifetime. I imagine the competition would be up a notch. Yeah, I mean, here. you've got. British guys who are all over this sport yeah. and it's deep, deep in talent and you've got Australians who just love this and you've got all of all of Europe who go and you've got Americans who go and they're they're really deep too so um, yeah I mean you talk to this Gerard guy from France and he's he's got a few rainbow jerseys and yeah, he's interesting guy. It. Yeah he is very interesting. Yeah. yeah. So you, you mentioned the, the British and the Aussies. Um, they're deep because they've had a facility like this for years. Absolutely. So it's reasonable to expect that a few years down the road, Canada's going to be in a much more competitive Absolutely. Space. I mean, the Aussies, I mean, they, velodromes are like hockey rinks here. They're everywhere. And um, England, I'm, I'm not so sure, but I'm sure they have more than just a few. Um, and the Americans, yeah, they're kind of like us, but there's just a lot of people there, right? Um, so with this track here, I mean, I, I think probably eventually you'll see the World Masters Championships come here, too. And um, but with this track, I mean, the Southern Ontario and the Greater Toronto area, you're, you're just going to see athletes spit out of this like like crazy. And it's great. I mean, look what the speed skating oval did in Calgary. I mean, the, the uh, athletes that came out of there were. Olympic and world champions. Yep. You'll see that here too. And it goes, it filters down into the the kids and the and the kids' parents and the older athletes. So we all, everyone gets involved. It's fantastic. It is. Good way to end it. Thanks, Peter.